Magical Princess Minky Momo is a TV series that aired in Japan in 1982. Our main character Momo lives in a dreamland in outer space where her parents watch over the hopes and dreams of mankind. But after a thousand years, it's drifted so far away from planet Earth that her parents need to send her down to the planet to fix things. Momo does this in the most magical girl way possible by brainwashing a childless couple into believing that she's their real daughter. While on Earth, she spends the show just doing what magical girls do best, solving people's problems and making people happy. Hey, it's a magical girl show, they're not really known for their story, so just stick with me for a second, okay? Most of the time, she does this with her magic wand, and every episode she turns into a magic adult with a different costume to get things done. This is all pretty standard stuff right now, sure, but this was a brand new idea back in 1982. And when you break it down, it was just a fun way to show some girls different jobs that they might want to get when they grow up. Momo becomes a firewoman, she becomes a policewoman in one episode, then she becomes a nurse, and even a professional tennis player in one episode. And if she helps enough people, the world of dreams just might return back to planet Earth. And just like with most cartoons from the 1980s, Minky Momo was made almost entirely just to sell a boatload of toys, and boy did they make a lot of them. Minky Momo Records, Minky Momo Cups, Minky Momo Books and Magazines, Toy Cars, Magic Wands. Heck, you couldn't turn around without bumping into something with her face on it in 1982. There's even a Minky Momo sewing machine, because why not? They had something they wanted to sell, so they slapped her face on it. It's pretty standard as far as magical girl shows go, and for a while I didn't really get why people loved it so much. I mean, sure it's a pretty good show, but that was before I saw the giant robot parody episode with combining animal friend mechs. The magical girl genre didn't really have any rules set up in 1982. One episode, Momo might be playing some tennis, and everything's pretty normal, and then out of nowhere she'll turn into Blackjack, and you don't even care it's a magical girl show anymore. With all that said, all these references ended up bringing in way more adult fans than they ever expected, but despite its popularity with people of all ages, something happened that would shock the creators of this series down to their very bones. Even though the show was doing pretty good, the toy company that funded Minky Momo thought, hey, we're not making enough money, and they bailed. Some say the toys were just really bad, but whatever the reason was, they just straight up stopped sending them money one day. This all led up to one of the boldest decisions I have ever seen an anime studio take, and something that scarred Japan for life. In episode 45, they make Momo lose all of her magical girl powers by shattering her pendant right after someone just saved her from some bad guys that kidnapped her animal friends. And when the toy company funding the show did not get the message, the people making Minky Momo went, Okay, how about we introduce Momo to the Isekai truck of good fortune? And Takeshi Shudo, the guy who wrote the show, being the absolute madman that he was, actually went and did it. The truck was full of common Rider toys too, just so you know exactly who they were upset with. What? She got better. Momo gets reborn as her foster parent's real child, and when she grows up she turns back into a kid after spending the entire show doing the exact opposite. It's a bittersweet ending, but it's over 30 years later and we're still talking about it. Could you imagine if they ended Pokemon this way? There would have been rioting in the streets. Now, I'm not saying this is where the whole anime truck thing comes from that bled into everything from Yu Yu Hakusho to modern anime. And honestly, I'd have to watch every single show from before 1982 to really tell you for sure. But if I was a betting man, I'd say this was a large part of it. Oh, that's not the curse of Minky Momo, though. You want to know what is the curse of Minky Momo? People say that when the final episode aired in Japan, an earthquake warning was broadcast right after in the Kanto region of Japan. So not only did the episode itself shock people, but it was so traumatizing, it said that Minky Momo's energy leaked into the physical world where it manifested as a real event. Don't believe me, huh? What if I told you this wasn't technically the end of the show, and that it gets way worse from here? This episode that I just described was the creators of the show just trying to end the anime on their own terms. But it wasn't actually the end of the series. After that, they were contractually obligated to finish that last chunk of episodes like nothing ever happened. And when the actual final episode did air on Japanese TV, guess what happened again? 
The 26th of May, 1983, is a day that will live on in infamy as one of the worst seismic events to ever hit Japan. And guess what aired exactly when this historic quake happened? That's right, the final episode of Minky Momo. Pure coincidence, you might say. Well, it doesn't end there. According to multiple Japanese sources, when they rebroadcast the series in 1995, the day that they showed the final episode again was the Great Hanshin Disaster of Japan in 1985. This all started an urban legend around Minky Momo that still goes on today. Is it possible that Momo caused these events to happen from the other side? I mean, probably not, but that's a whole lot of coincidences, so I'll let you guys decide. This didn't stop Japan from airing the show on TV, though. It even got shown on Cartoon Network in Japan, where they gave it its own custom bumpers and everything. I'm so happy that I found these. Minky Momo's success got it a couple of sequels, some OVAs, and even a video game for Nintendo's Family Entertainment System, which most of you probably know as the Nintendo Entertainment System in America. No, it didn't leave Japan. Completely untranslated, don't even try and look it up. America, though, we never got any of that, except for one VHS tape, which I'm gonna go ahead and talk about right now. Minky Momo and the Fountain of Youth. This one, we're lucky we can actually watch in English, but just barely. Harmony Gold released it on VHS under the name The Magical Princess Gigi, and this is the same name a lot of other countries know Minky Momo by too. In this movie, Momo investigates an island that her parents get trapped on, and while she's there she meets spies from every country on Earth that all want to harness the magical power at the center of the island. And at the top of the middle of that island is a volcano where Peter Pan is turning people back into children, so it's up to Momo to save her parents, stop a fight from breaking out between every single country on Earth, and have some mid-air airplane fights on the way too, it's pretty awesome. I know that sounds kind of boring, but believe me when I say that this is actually a good movie. Most of the animation is fantastic, and you can tell that this was made in 1985, because this looks absolutely stunning, even today. Anyway, I don't really have anything else to add about this movie other than it's a great film, and you should probably go watch it. The Japanese version, that is. I have never had an anime start with a disclaimer from some kid saying, Hey, you know this tape that we just sold you? Might not work so good. Might want to get that checked out. So yeah, that's a, that's a new one on me. I'd also like to point out that they put the entire beginning of the movie at the end of the movie. And they also turned a character from a girl into a boy for some reason. I don't know, man. It was Harmony Gold trying to figure out what they were doing in the 1980s. Good music, though. Now, even though this is technically an OVA and those are almost always direct to video, this actually aired in Japanese theaters. That's how popular Mickey Momo was in 1985. Coincidentally, this was the exact same time that rival magical girl Creamy Mammy was also popular. So Piero and Ashi Productions put aside their differences in the name of friendship and they made a short where both of them have a giant Power Rangers style Sentai battle where they wreck an entire city. Now you would think trying to end the series with a truck would end the creator of the show's career too, but this movie and TV show were so well loved in Japan that they let him write a sequel series in 1991, and that series was so popular that they made a special where both Momos team up to bring dreams and happiness back to the world. Quiz time! Which of these characters is Minky Momo, and which of these characters is the Minky Momo from the sequel series? Trick question! Doesn't really matter since they're basically the same character. They did not even try to make these two girls look different. In fact, these two Momos are so identical that they didn't even bother changing the name of the second series until halfway through where they renamed it Magical Princess Minky Momo Hold On To Your Dreams. And even after all the dark stuff that they pulled with the first series, they actually doubled down with the sequel. I guess after isekaiing a magical girl with a truck you can get away with anything. The most important episode from the second series is episode 53, where Momo meets an actual anime animator who worked himself to death and to fulfill his final wish, Momo turns herself into a cartoon character to finish his anime. He later went on to write the entire Pokemon anime all the way up until 2002, so that's a success story in my book if I've ever heard one. 
We almost got a third series too, but unfortunately Takeshi Shudo passed away in 2010, leaving that manga that they made in 2004 as the last official part of the franchise. Now here's some more trivia for you. You guys ever hear of a guy by the name of Ishida Toyo? Probably not, right? But he designed the characters for the Fist of the North Star anime, and that's really important because he also worked on Minky Momo. Guess who shows up in episode 38 of Fist of the North Star? Yeah, not Minky Momo, but it looks exactly like her, doesn't it? Minky Momo is still well remembered even today, and everything from its transformation sequences to its darker themes carried all the way into modern Magical Girl shows too, and Sailor Moon wouldn't even have a talking cat without it. From Italy to France, from Brazil to Indonesia, you name a country, and odds are they have heard of Minky Momo. America is pretty much the only country that never got it for some reason. Lots of people are probably asking themselves at this point, well where can I watch this then if it's so important? The Curse of Minky Momo kind of prevents you from doing that, and I'm gonna go ahead and explain why. It's said that Carl Masek had two series that he passed on and didn't want to buy for streamlined pictures in the 90s. The first was Dragon Ball, whose Harmony Gold version is still lost media to this day, and the second one was, you guessed right, Minky Momo. They didn't call it Minky Momo though, they went and rebranded it as Princess Gigi, because what even is a Minky Momo anyway, right? Speaking of segues, by pure coincidence, Harmony Gold president Frank Agrama had a daughter, and her name was Gigi. What are the odds, right? This means that the English version only ended up airing in Melbourne, Australia because that's the only place on the entire planet that felt like buying the English version of Minky Momo to show on TV. YouTube channel This and That Gaming actually comes from Melbourne and he managed to save a few episodes and wouldn't you know it, one of them was actually the end of the series with the truck and everything all in English. They edited around it a little bit but they actually ended up showing this on TV outside of Japan. I'm gonna leave a link in the description so you can take a look for yourself. Big thanks to This and That Gaming for saving these from becoming lost media forever. Besides those episodes, no copies of the English version of Minky Momo have survived. Except, and I know someone in the comments is gonna point this out, but Amazon Prime says they actually have the entire English version all up there on Amazon Prime Video. Here's the thing about that. In 2015, William Winkler Productions released it on Amazon Prime. That part is true. However, either nobody noticed or they didn't tell anybody because the entire show is gone. If you try and watch it, you get a this title is currently unavailable message. That's right, every episode of the Harmony Gold dub was up there and through some absolutely cursed luck, it was taken down before anybody noticed. This is possibly the only time in anime history that an English dub has become lost media not once, but twice, making this possibly the most cursed anime I have ever talked about on this channel. They say if you say Minky Momo three times into a mirror at 3am you get transported to the bad timeline, where Harmony Gold owns the rights to Dragon Ball and Minky Momo grows up to be Hamon Karn from Zeta Gundam, but that's an urban legend for another day. And that's Minky Momo, the most important magical girl show that you've probably never heard about. I'd like to thank all the people who support me on Patreon. Big shout out to Lost in Translation who helped make this video a possibility. And if you like what I do, you'll be visited by the Isekai Truck of Good Fortune. More Lost anime and anime history will come your way, but only if you leave a like and say good luck Minky Momo in the comments. Thank you very much for watching this video all the way to the end. Take care.